amazing stuff. It was. So how fast was the album recorded? Like two, many, two days. Two days? Yeah. But we knew the songs, you know. Pretty much. You did them live. We did our live set, yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a it's a gnarled sounding. It doesn't sound po polished, I must say. You know. Right. But it's not. I like it that way. Hey, Bobby. It's a real punk album. Bobby. Yeah, it's a classic. That's for sure. Now, who are you guys listening to at that point? Like Stooges or what? What? Yeah. Who are you at? Pink Fairies. Mm -hmm. Stooges. Um, some of the '60s garage bands. The Seeds. Okay. Um, you know the Sonics. That's amazing. So when you made it, it, it punk wasn't even a term. They, they called it that later. Yeah, I was a bit, I was a bit surprised when they used that expression <laughs> the first time. Yeah, I thought, are they talking about me? Right. It didn't sound endearing, huh? No. <laughs> That's, so two days to record and mix, or just two days to record? No, two days to record, and I think they spent a couple of days mixing. They threw us out, and uh, <coughs> they tried to make us sound good. So it's pretty much the engineer. <laughs> Nick Lowe didn't do too much, huh? Nick, yeah, well, Nick mainly... Uh, I seem to remember Nick going down the shops and getting the cider. <laughs> That's his contribution. No, I mean, it's. I think it's the right production. It's the kind of uh, non-production. It's kind of lo-fi. Yeah. The Sex Pistols album sounds very polished. You know, and it, it sounds good, but I think punk rock should be a bit, a bit gnarled. It's got to be hectic. Yeah. Now, when you came to LA first, was it the uh, West Whiskey a Go Go to Starwood? I can't what did remember. you guys? Do you remember the first? No, I, I remember, remember the Rat Club in Boston. I remember. CBGB's yeah. in New York. You don't remember what the LA debut was? I remember both the names you mentioned. Okay. We both, Maybe we the both. whiskey. We played both of them, yeah. Starwood, which is right up the street. I mean, they bulldozed it, but it used to be right here. Right. <laughs> yeah, I seem to remember uh, yeah, having quite, quite a lot of fun. Yeah, big party coming to LA, huh? Yeah. Palm trees and substances of all sorts. Lots of girls. <laughs> who Lots some, of flesh. Who, for some reason, because you play a musical instrument, find you attractive. It never ceases to amaze me, you know? <laughs> Put on a bass and you're a sex wasn't, symbol. Wasn't complaining. <laughs> that, that's amazing. So you're still playing with Dave. The Damned is still yeah. still a unit. Yeah. Amazing he's stuff. A, he's a really good singer. Yeah. He has, he has, so were you the last one to join? Rat brought you in. Was Brian and Dave already in? It was a melting pot. Um, Chrissy Hind was in the band for five minutes. Um, all sorts of other people as well. Wow. So, it, London was a melting pot of like about 25, 30 people who would end up being in all the punk groups, you know, from, from that era. And we were all trying out working with each other. Sure. Yeah. Fast and brag. <laughs> So how'd you pick the Rodgers and Hammerstein song to do? Oh, it was my mum and dad's <laughs> idea. Yeah. So you heard it growing up? Yes. Yeah. It's a nice tune. Very unlikely for a punk rocker to do something like that. And, and who, like de who deemed you Captain Sensible? Was that before The Damned or I that? No, that was during The Damned. Yeah, I was Ray Burns on that album. Okay. Um, yeah, it was Larry Wallace from The Pink Fairies. Did he really? He called you that? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, obviously, ironic because I'm. Uh, okay, I'm coming. Neither a captain, and I'm not very sensible either. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Cheers. Appreciate it. See you in the show. Okay.